Welcome to Cherry Hinton Baptist Church. We are gathering around the transforming presence of the uh, of our Christ, who is uh, both born and uh, living in this world, but also died and risen, and ascended and glorified. And this was uh, talked about uh, way before uh, Jesus's birth. And uh, because uh, on uh, Tuesday, it's uh, Feast of the Epiphany uh, of the, uh, the, the, the wise men uh, coming to the, uh, to, to the child um, after he's born. Uh, and we've got at the end of this, we've got gold and the incense. Uh, this is a really good reading for this time of year, but it's just so true about the light of Jesus being in our world in 2021. If Blanca could unmute herself and uh, we could hear this marvellous reading, that would be splendid. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Herds of camel will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Sue. And the uh, reading goes on, and Sue was down to read this anyway, so um, if you'd like to carry on, uh, Sue. Uh, it's a marvellous piece of hope to begin our year with. If you just feel that 2020 was a little bit dark or that... Uh, this this is for us this is this is for now that we will continue to see the light of the risen christ uh making light sometimes a very dark world uh don't be afraid and listen to Stu. you will know that i the lord am your savior your redeemer the mighty one of jacob i will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler the sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. We're going to um, have a reading from the end of uh, the Sermon on the Mount, which is the end of Matthew chapter 7. And the thrust of the passage we're going to hear says that if anybody hears my words and puts them into practice, um, He's like a man uh, building his house on the rock. Uh, but it's what are these words that uh, Jesus uh, um, uh, is asking us to take seriously? I incidentally would say that if you want to have the fruit of the Spirit um, and you ignore the things that Jesus is talking about in the Sermon on the Mount, it's not going to go well for you. I'll just do the summary right at the bottom. I think that if I was going to summarize what's happened in the Sermon on the Mount, um, uh, Jesus is saying, you must love. And, and if you want to know what love is, then it's particularly with people who you might have good reason to be against. Uh, Jesus says, you must love and be reconciled to your enemies without judging them. If you do that, you, goodness and kindness and peace and joy will well up. Um, Jesus is saying that if, if you want to have these fruits, you must be pure in your thinking. You must, 
don't don't say that you're nice when you're not being nice don't don't mess with the truth be pure in your thinking be pure in the way in which you look at other people and that's not just to do with lust it's got a whole load of other things that i think that purity of looking at other people purity of speaking so that we don't deceive other people uh, we need to make sure that our motives are that we uh, want to serve God, not money. Much easier to see that in other people than in ourselves. Uh, a test of that is, do we give those uh, give money to and time and effort to those in need? And also we need to pray. We need to ask. We can't just say, dear God, bless the world. We need to ask what it is that we want God to do in our lives. We want to pray to be righteous. That's uh, my uh, summary um, over now. Oh, let's hear the passage. Uh, so Collins, if you could read the passage and then over to Chris. Therefore, everyone who hears the, these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught us as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. Thank you, Collins. So we're continuing with what do we want for 2021? Do we want loo roll? Do we want work? Do we want a vaccine? We've thought about some of those things. Uh, do we want a hug? These are sort of things that we're hoping for in 2021, uh, or I hope we want to be closer to and more like Jesus. And we're going to think about that some more now. Um, I'm going to summarize it like this. Build your life on the person and words of Jesus. His words give us blessings and strength if we do them. And his words have authority. The authority of Jesus is different. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Um, I was thinking about something I learned in GCSE geography, Joel, like this, uh, about Mexico City in 1985. We learned about this case study of an earthquake in Mexico City. It was magnitude eight. Uh, it led to a lot of a lot of deaths in Mexico City because Mexico City was founded on a, on a river or lake bed. And therefore, it wasn't a very good place to build such a large city in that sense. It made it hard to build foundations because it was all muddy and silty. Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't like a strong rock base. So it was harder to strengthen those houses. And coupled with that, there was a lot of poverty in Mexico City and a lot of people built their houses very poorly uh, on this on this base. And it was hard to build good foundations. So when this magnitude eight earthquake hit, then um, about 30,000 houses were, were destroyed uh, and it led to approximately 10,000 deaths. Um, the approximations vary, uh, but there was, it was a it was a, a huge bad earthquake, and this and um, it's remembered to the the lessons that were learned across the globe by this GCSE geography student were that you, you don't build your house, uh, you don't build your city on a on a riverbed without giving the individual structures much better foundations. Um, and so then when I was watching the news again in 2017, and it came up, there's been an earthquake in Mexico City. I thought, ah, oh, not again. Right. Have these lessons not been learned now on that on that particular occasion, there was uh, less destruction, but it still came up as a major event. But there were less destruction as the estimates from Wikipedia, the most reliable of sources. So there's about 40 buildings uh, were lost and these buildings had been complained about that, that, that they were poorly built um, and the deaths were less, about 370 deaths. So, so to some extent, lessons were learned, but there's still an issue with foundations an issue with it's harder to build where there's not rock we need to take care how and where we build our lives 
There are some places where it's much harder to build. There are some places where we should not build. We need to build on the rock. But what is the rock? I'd say, who is the rock? Jesus says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. These words of Jesus's, I would say that the person of Jesus is the rock and his teaching, they give a solid foundation. Do you want Jesus to live with you? Because actually, if Jesus is the rock and we build our house on him, then that is what it is to be of the family of Jesus, right? We are, we are building our home on him. Do we want Jesus to live with us? In John 14, 23, Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. If we're building on Jesus, we're building our house on Jesus, it is to live and abide with Jesus, our rock. The person of Jesus and his teaching are of a piece. They go together. We can't say I love Jesus, but I hate his teaching. That does not fit. The rock itself is to be the foundation of the house and they are to be of a piece. You don't build your house not on its foundation. That doesn't work. They are to go together. The person of Jesus and his teaching go together. And blessings are contained within his teaching. That is what it is to be wise. So why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we build our house on Jesus? Why wouldn't we make Christ our foundation? Well, he gives that case. Jesus points this out. He says, everyone who hears his words of mine and does not do them, that's possible, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Why wouldn't we build our, our lives on Jesus? Well, perhaps we find it too hard. Perhaps there are aspects we do not like. There could be ease or preference reasons why we don't build our house on Jesus, why we don't follow what he says, why we don't do what he tells us to do. And we're told that that is to be like a foolish man. Now, when, when I, we give our children vegetables to eat, I know with my children, the argument is very rarely, and I'm not sure if it's ever been, perhaps it has an obscure situation, but very rarely do the children say, I don't really believe these vegetables are good for me. No, right, that's not the argument. The argument is, I hate it. I hate broccoli, right? It's the taste that's the problem, right? The vegetables aren't to their taste. What do we find unpalatable about the teaching of Jesus? It really is good for us, but maybe we don't like the taste. And it's, it's not with the hypothetical broccoli either that arguments kick off, right? That theoretical broccoli sitting on the shelf in the shop, that's not an issue. It's when the broccoli's right in front of us and we're making them eat it. We must eat that broccoli. That, that could be the problem. What is it about Jesus' teaching that we find difficult when it's in front of us? That could be when, we're, when we'd rather build on the sand. Do we have sure foundations? The other thing is, to get to, the, to get to the rock, we might need to dig down very deep. Uh, in Palestine, uh, I'm told by, by Ken Bailey, who's very good on this, um, I'm told that the, the rains come in Palestine, in Israel, in the winter, um, and so do some snows. And that could be the storm that's in this story. And we, we, you don't want to build your house in the winter because that's when you get the rain. But in summer, the earth is baked and it's a clay earth. And when it's baked, it becomes really hard and you might be persuaded it can bear the weight in the summer because actually the earth is very hard and therefore it's difficult to dig into. It's difficult to dig down to the rock. Are there things that we put our lives on that we think are solid? Because in the summer, in good times, it, it looks that way. The earth looks very hard, very able to support a house, but not so able in the winter, not so able in the storms. Do we trust in atheism do we trust in our families do we trust in our jobs do we trust in our health 
things that in good times might look like they're strong foundations, might look like they can bear a house. And in good times, they can, potentially, but not as well as the rock, not as surely. But they can trick us. And it can look like, oh, I might as well just build on this hard earth. But no, says Jesus, when the storm hits, you want to be built on rock. He can sustain us for all of time, immovable. It's if we do them, we get these blessings of a sure, solid faith, of a sure, solid life built with Jesus that is true on this earth and will be true forever because it can't move. The blessings are there if we do them. No one, when offered a vaccine, I hope, would say, ah, snatch it from the doctor. I won't have it in the arm. I'll just squirt it directly into my mouth. I would prefer that, right? I would prefer that form of administration. No, it's a shot in the arm. It could cause pain. But if, we admit, if the vaccine is administered wrongly, then all the cost of it, all the development will be worthless. If we don't like the way that Jesus' teaching tastes, then all that he paid for it his blood on the cross, his death for our sins, though that still costs an inestimable amount, it won't benefit us if we don't take it in the right way. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. If we want Christ, we must follow his methods. Martin Luther King, um, said this about in some of his writings. He said, in the final analysis, means and ends must cohere. They must go together. They must be coherent because the end is pre-existent in the means. Now, if he wanted his uh, followers, his protesters to be respected, they were going to have to protest respectfully. If he wanted to say that violence was wrong and show it up as being so terribly wrong, he would have to protest in a nonviolent manner. If he was going to show the peace of God to the world, he was going to follow a path of peaceful resistance. The means and the ends must cohere. If we want our lives to be as followers of Jesus, if we want to live with Jesus forever, then we must build on the rock. We must follow Jesus's words. They must go together. What does being built on Jesus look like? The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. The winds beat on the house. There was a time of trouble. There was a time of difficulty. It looks like loving God and loving others, even when it hurts, there will be trouble. And that's when the rock shows forth as solid as it is. Now, a, there are some verses in Isaiah, Isaiah 20, 28, uh, where God says that he is laying in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone and a sure foundation. God says that he is laying the foundation. Jesus is this foundation. Jesus is this rock. It's one that is tested. It's one that can survive and bear up and give strength to the whole building, the whole house, the whole temple. Even when it hurts and Jesus took this hurt, he's been tested. He has died. He has survived death. He's taken the pain of sin and death and sorrow. Even when it hurts, we can look to Jesus because he is a tested foundation, he is a tested stone. And he has stood the test and he's done it without sinning. He has done it for us. Do we look to Jesus as that tested rock? Because when he was beaten, he still looked to God. When he was beaten, he still rescued and saved. And he can rescue and save us too as our rock. Are there any of Jesus's teachings that we particularly need to implement in 2021, thinking about the fruit? 
They will strengthen us if we do them. A colleague of mine was told, tells a story about how the doctor uh, said to her that she was gluten intolerant and lactose intolerant on the same day. And she told the doctor, pick one. Right? I'm not losing all that. You know, you choose. It's one or the other. Well, the doctor didn't want to take away all her food. That wasn't the doctor's plan. The doctor wanted to give her complete health. Now, it might be the case that in looking for complete health, we need to implement one thing first. That's possible, right? It might be that we don't go for it all at once. But Jesus wants us to have complete health, right? He wants to eliminate all the intolerances. So we should be immovably following Jesus, founded on the rock, founding on his life and his teaching, his person. Now, this is Chroma. We quite often go to Chroma, uh, rather like Chroma. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's got a lot of sand. Uh, and there's, there's the beach at Chroma. And you can see that down here on the beach, you don't get anything that people can live on, right? You get things that the crabs can live in, perhaps. Um, we find some of those around there. There's a, there's, a, there's a groin that has the sand and you get some sea creatures, small sea creatures in there, but not, it's not for people to live in. Further up the beach, there's a, a thin raft of concrete and you get some stronger structures there, some beach houses, that sort of thing. Um, but people don't live a permanent life in a beach house, right? But you can last a bit longer in a beach house, I suppose. But then up on the hill, you get the town. Um, and I picked this particular patch because around there you don't only get houses, but you get lighthouses, you get bigger structures, things that can survive storms, where people can make a life and where also others can be warned. A lighthouse can warn others. That might be what it is to live our lives on the rock. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. The other thing about this prophecy from Ezekiel, um, from Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah 28, where God says he will lay a sure foundation, is that the Jews in their temple, there was a stone on which uh, was placed hot ashes and, and, and fire and incense in the holiest part of the temple, in the Holy of Holies, that was called the foundation. And this would be known to typical Jews at Jesus' time, that in the temple, that is the foundation, the special stone. Well, Jesus taught with real authority. He was the stone that God had placed. He was the one with the amazing teaching. And he taught of his own authority, not as the teachers of the law. He taught with real authority because he was better than this foundation of the temple. And in Revelation, it says that there will be no temple in that city because Christ will be our temple. He's building a real home, a real place for us to be. Do we know his teaching? It may surprise us. We may be amazed. We might think we know it. and Actually, we need to look again. And maybe there'll be bits that surprise us. He has authority. He's better than the temple foundation. He is the real foundation. He is the real rock. Let's recognize it and follow him. What do we, what do you want for 2021? Please be praying for the church. Please be praying for what our priorities are as a community, as well as individually. Who around us need to see Jesus? Who needs to see his words working in our actions? Who else needs to hear his words? Can we be, perhaps we're happy as a home for Jesus. Can we be like a lighthouse too? Who else needs to hear his words for themselves? Okay. Um seems to me that one of the questions that Chris asked was, what's not to like about Jesus's teaching? Um, uh, just looking at the bottom four lines, uh, there are a whole load of times I don't want to be reconciled to somebody who's behaving badly, particularly when they're unrepentantly behaving badly. I don't want that. I don't want to love them. I don't want to love them as I'd love a friend, somebody who's nice, somebody who I can see the light of Jesus in. Um, I don't, there's part of me, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, purity of thinking. Um, I, I think that if, you, if you're if you pure in your thinking and in your speaking, you, 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 you will um, not 
um, get ahead as other people do. You need to do a certain amount of lying and twisting of the truth in order to get ahead in society. I really don't like Jesus' teaching of yeah, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. This is me at my worst, by the way. This isn't the whole story about me. Um, do I want to really serve God or I want to look after my own material interests? Um, material interests can, yeah, I, I want to do that. Um, and there are times where I, I, I don't want to to set my sights really high. I want to set my sights low because it's, it's easier. Uh, I, I don't want righteousness. Okay, uh, those may or may not uh, chime with you. Uh, but if I do what I've just been talking about there, I, my house will be on sand. And when tragedy and bad stuff happens, my life will fall apart. Um, so I... Uh, as, as Chris has challenged us, uh, I, I want to be like Jesus. Um, I want to, uh, I want him to teach me how to uh, dance to the beat of his heart. <clears throat> and this is a prayer from the Eastern Baptist Association. May the God who loved us so much that he climbed into our world, into our neighborhood, into our humanity, May this God stir up love and compassion in your heart this year. May the Holy Spirit who conceived new life within Mary grow life and love and light and hope within your home, within your family and your community this year. May the miracle of Jesus, Son of God, born for us, Deepen your faith and expand your expectations that with God the impossible is possible. And as the infant Jesus nestled contentedly in the manger, may you know and trust that the Lord is with you, blessing, protecting, enfolding and upholding you and those you love this year. Amen.